Whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter, it's really easy to get lost in the world of miniature painting. There's so much information readily available and so much talent online that it's really easy to fall into analysis paralysis and feel dejected about your own painting. After all, how are we supposed to compete with all the talent that we can see on Instagram? That's so frustrating. So in today's video, I'll give you three tips that I've found to help me the most in improving my painting, regardless of where I was in the painting journey. And by the end of this video, you'll have three specific steps that you can take in order to level up your painting. I'll be returning to Lionel Johnson that I've already worked quite a bit on in a previous video. And today I'll be doing some corrections on him, even though I felt he was kind of finished at the end of the last video, which you might want to check out if you haven't seen already. But after getting some feedback on the finished miniature, I started to see some issues and some things that really needed correcting. And I thought that this would be the perfect occasion to talk about how to improve on your painting and take that next step in your painting journey. Because this little case study leads us into the first tip that I want to give you today quite perfectly. Tip number one, seek qualified opinions from communities or experts. The biggest advances in my painting has come from getting qualified feedback from people I know and trust. And while there's nothing wrong with asking strangers online for feedback, I think that investing in a community, and that can be online or offline, is exponentially more beneficial for you if you want to grow your painting. Another way to find this expertise is to attend workshops with talented painters. And I promise you that you'll see a big spike in your ability, especially if you're just starting out. So if you have the chance to, I highly encourage you to invest in these two resources, communities and experts. And if you're looking for an online mentor for feedback or an online community, you need to look no further than my Patreon, where we have a Patreon Discord with written feedback. And there's also the opportunity, if you're really serious about your painting, to sign up for some of the private coaching where I'll give you concrete feedback along with precise instructions on how to progress in your current projects. For these students working closely together to help you reach your painting goals. If you're interested in any of this, go ahead and click the link for the Patreon down in the description. That's it for tip number one. Let's get started with the actual painting. The first thing I wanted to fix is the small hiccup in the basing. The line and both of the watchers have a bit of distance between them and the base. And here some liquid green stuff can really help to kind of seal that gap. With the painting, the biggest thing I want to fix is some of the volumetric lighting on the armor. I've definitely overlooked some of the larger shapes while getting lost in the details when I painted this the first time around. So adding more of a volumetric light to the armor is really needed. This means simply shading and highlighting the armor plates in accordance with the larger volumes. So cylinders and spheres. Another inconsistency is the texture on the armor. The leg has more of a polished steel type texture painted with shiny sharp lines, whereas the shoulder has more of a dotted texture painted with stippling. So as I highlight the armor, I commit to having this polished texture all the way around. Check out this before and after picture. So the armor has more volume and I think that it reads more clearly. And I think now that it would be a good time to talk about tip number two. Tip number two is to set concrete goals. Once you've found somebody qualified, whether that's a community or an expert, you should really start to set some concrete goals for yourself. These goals could be for an individual project, like I want to do NMM on this piece, 
or they could be more general painting goals such as I want to paint two hours every Sunday on my army. These goals really depend on you individually but I want to encourage you to keep them as simple and as concrete as possible. One thing I often see is that when people are motivated to improve, they'll try to succeed at everything at once. They'll then get overwhelmed by their own ambition and start to feel like a failure when they can't live up to their high expectations that they've set on themselves. So please don't try to do everything at once. Instead, try to look for one small area where you can start to improve on your painting. If you look for these small things, you'll slowly and steadily start to add more tools to the arsenal. So try setting a goal for yourself for the next 30 days. If you're painting a display miniature, that can be the duration of a single project. If you're painting for gaming, that might mean painting a bunch of miniatures with the same goal. But let's just say that you commit the next 30 days to studying how to paint leather in each painting session. No matter how many miniatures or how few miniatures you paint, you really just wanna excel at that leather. And I promise you that if you follow this, you'll see results. That is tip number two. Let's get back to the painting and start making some changes to the face mask of the lion. Just as we did on the armor, we need to add some more volumetric lighting on the mask of the lion. Here I'm building more of a highlight uh, on the forehead next to this gold symbol. And I'm also building some brightness on one side of the visor while keeping the other side kind of dark. This helps to establish a direction of light and create additional contrast. When you have an element such as this with two distinct planes, it really helps to have some contrast between the two in order to make them more readable. And of course, I had to change the eyes to a glowing red. This is a relative quick fix, however. Put some red on the eyes and a little bit of red glow around the eye sockets to give that slight OSL feel. In order to draw more attention to the face, I changed some of the gold to this shiny black color. Here I'm building up from a dark black blue cold tone and working in more towards of an ivory highlight. I also airbrush a bit on the wings and the helmet. I'm just using thin glazes of violet ink. This helps to desaturate the gold a bit as well as darken it. Check out this before and after shot. I think that there's much more focus drawn to the center of the face now and the whole thing seems more readable. Would you agree? And while I had the airbrush loaded, I went ahead and glazed in some of these violet inks um, onto the base as well. Bye. 
I also add a bit of orange paint with the paintbrush to break up some of the texture and create some more visual interest and to not have everything be so green. I add a bit more of brightness and a bit more texture to the stone statue on the ground. And while we're seeing this, let me tell you about tip number three. Tip number three shut out the noise. So once you find qualified people to give you feedback, once you know what you want to work on, it's time to shut out the noise and start getting to work. It's very easy to get trapped in doom scrolling and endless video watching and taking in a hundred different guides on any given topic, thinking that having all of this information in our brains is going to help us when we sit down to paint. When in fact, all of this guidance and all of this information is worth very little without it being followed by actual deliberate practice. And I know that this may seem kind of ironic since I want you to watch my videos and sign up for my patron, but I really want to remind you that there is a big difference between watching someone paint and actually practicing how to paint yourself. And if you're serious about improving, you're going to have to do the work. So make sure to have some time where you shut off your phone and your computer and all the distractions and have some focused space for deliberate practice. And I encourage you to be patient with this process. Learning a skill, any skill takes time and practice. And so that's what I'll leave you with. I hope that this video has encouraged you to seek out some expert and qualified opinions in your community to set some concrete and achievable goals for yourself and to actually put aside all of the distractions and do the work. And if you follow these three rather simple steps, I promise you that you'll see some progression in your painting. With that, it's time to show the full finished piece of Lionel Johnson. I hope that you can see how these small changes helped to make the miniature more readable more clearly. My own goal with this project was to work on precision and really hone in on some technical abilities. So taking that extra step to seek out some feedback even when I thought that the miniature was finished and then actually applying these tips and fixing my own mistakes has certainly helped me improve not only this project but has helped me improve as a painter overall. I hope that you like the miniature and the painting tips. If you do, I hope you'll consider signing up for the Patreon. Looking forward to seeing you over there and happy painting. <laughs>